Hello there, and welcome to my Arty Corner here on YouTube. My name's Angela, Angela Porter. I love to draw, I love to create art, and I'm currently working on an accordion journal that I made as a way of keeping ideas, motifs, inspiration, and just creating art for the sake of creating art. So I've got a few sections done. I've still got this one to do, this one here. There's even a hidden tag in here, which I haven't decorated yet. This one's got a tag in as well that's got a drawing on both sides, which cunningly represent my initials, as I've got poppies, pods, and yeah, poppies and poppy pods and pods. So P there for my surname, and there's an A on this side, even though I've managed to um, get not on camera, I'll explain in a moment. Um, I thought it was a subtle way of putting my initials in. The A is pretty obvious, but the P is a bit of a puzzle, if you don't know, but it's there. And some of my favourite things, the favourite kinds of patterns, sections for adding things, I don't know what I'm going to do with them yet. Little cards that have got little drawings on either side. So they can be moved around to give it a different look. In fact, in these envelopes, this was probably space for another card or two. So I've coloured those ones with Distress Ink. And here is what I did in my last video, and I have finished adding colour to it, and some white um, gel pen highlights, and, and this one here, I just felt it needed something. It was a big expanse of green that didn't make sense. Now it sort of does. And I want to put this in here, but I think I might want to put it in as a kind of book or section, but I'm not quite sure how I want to do this. Um, part of me wants to put here some kind of um, string or thread that I can slip things under and create a little book here, which would be quite nice because I could put other pages in here and other drawings or whatever. But I'd need something for that side, which is fine by me, and something for this side. And I've also got another three pages in that. And I've got another one of these. I cut two of them. So I think today I'm going to leave this one as it is because I need to work out what I'm going to do with this to protect the colour because most of this is pit artist pencil and um, pit pastel pencils, so chalk pastels in pencil form. And there are many different brands and kinds out there. And it will move with touch and you know moving against the paper and so on. So I do need to do something to protect this in some way. And I haven't figured that one out yet. I'm thinking of vellum, but I might put a vellum page over it. But I may attach the vellum sort of like um, another page sort of front and back so that it will cover this but I'm not sure yet so I, so I don't smudge it or anything I think I'll just put it to one side for today and I'll work on this one which is another page I am full up with a cold I think I've got a cold coming on which is a bit gutting I haven't had a cold in well since before Covid and I have done a COVID test. It doesn't seem to be COVID, but I'll test again in a couple of days. The only place I've been with people this week was I went out for lunch yesterday. Took myself out for lunch. And you can get a cold symptom within a day. So I'm going, great. The only time. And I, you know, oh gosh, I can do without this. I think anybody can do without being ill, but I've been sneezing, I've got a runny nose, my ears are ringing, um, and I'm feeling a bit, and my head is feeling a bit fuzzy and full at the moment, but it is what it is, and I thought I'd come and do this, except I need some glasses, because I can't see what I'm doing, and um, yeah, it's, yeah, but there we are, that's okay. I think it puts an end to me going out the house today. Or doing anything much today, I think. I've had a few days of emotional ups and downs, which doesn't help as well, because that's drained me. Nothing of any great concern. It's just life, what can I say? It just comes along at times and it just creates all kinds of problems. And... um 
Yeah. So I've just used one of my rulers, one of my many rulers that's got grids on, just to give me... That's not very straight. Even I can tell that's not... Well, it is. It's not bad. It's close. That makes me feel happier. Um, but I've got a grid here. And... Um, this, I did notice in the in the comments, somebody left me a comment asking if I'd coloured this paper with watercolour or pastels. No, this is the colour of the paper. It's Claire Fontaine paint on mixed media paper, multi-techniques paper. So it's quite hefty. I can't remember the GSM or the pounds weight. It's got a good tooth on it, so it takes pastels well. They do actually rub in really well into them, into the surface, but there still will be some that comes off. And um, sort of watercolours, water-based media work really well on it. Pens do, although I tend to wear them down a lot quicker on this than I would on, on smoother paper. And um, I just quite like it. One thing I do need to do is I'm going to run my fingernails along these edges because that is where the paper trimmer was run along them. And so where you cut them, cut downwards you get this little paper ridge um, bone folder or just running your fingernail will flatten it so that will stop me from fretting about that okay I'll tell you what I've got here I've got an 05 um, Sakura Pigma Micron it's brown in colour um, I found it impossible to get any browns or Pigma colour colours smaller than an 0.05 here in the UK and um, well let's just see what happens here um, do I have my reference book no it's downstairs genius oh well we'll just make it as we go along which is not a problem for me I think I'm going to start with I think I'll start with something that I can create swirls from So I like concentric circles or ovals or roundish shapes. There's just something pleasing about these shapes to me. And they also create a wonderful place to attach things to and to start growing. So I've just drawn along the bottom edge, then come off in a spiral. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take from the bottom edge of this spiral a line that loops all the way around again. And I'm going to pause for a moment because I need to go and get something for my... Okay, back. It would be a stop-start video, I think, today with my nose. But there, there we've got a nice start to this. And I quite like this already. But I can see that one of the... Something I perhaps would like to do is to go along this line here and start to create some curves that fan out here and create a nice kind of ribbonish kind of thing going on here. And to finish these off along the edge, if you could see what I'm doing, I'm sort of starting a little way up from the base of the line, curving down along the line, and just allowing it to connect with the line, the next line along. And it just gives this feeling almost like a shell edge, you know, like you get on scallop shells and things like that a little bit. So that's that's what I'm doing there. And here I've got this lovely shape which will be perfect to create another one of these kinds of shapes there. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's add another spiral like I did here. So um, I got all the five templates for the next book after Whimsical Houses inked and altered as requested and sent off yesterday and that's why I took myself out for some lunch 
and um, I went with a journal, a notebook, so I could sit and write as well, because I have some, I have quite a lot of things on my mind at the moment and things I'm trying to work through. Again, it's nothing to be worried about. It's part and parcel of life and growing and learning about yourself, discovering things and wanting to find out more about. But yeah, it's it's just one of those things. And um, I'm quite intrigued by poetic prose or prose poetry, um, which is really interesting to me at the moment, especially as there seems to be no particular definition for it, other than it's not prose as in an essay to inform. It's more descriptive, but it uses sort of like poetic devices and ideas and rhythms of words and all sorts of things. And um, I'm thinking, oh, don't I write like that? And the answer is probably at times. Um, but there were some things I needed to write about to, to get them out of my head. Um, because it doesn't make sense if things are rushing, you know, rumbling around my head. It's much easier if I can get them onto paper and in words. And, um, and that was incredibly difficult to do in the cafe, which is one of my favourite, you know, it's my current favourite. It's somewhere I, I, it's familiar to me now. I know what's expected of me when I go there, how it works. I know there's usually nearly always, actually always something I can eat, even if it's cake. And um, although I shouldn't eat cake, but you know, hey ho, life is too short, not for the occasional treat. And um, but even though it was quiet there, there was still a lot of voices, quiet voices and very quiet music in the background. And then noises of things like um, knives and forks and cups and um, claws of a dog's feet on the on the ground and um, the door and people coming and going and yeah it, it I found it incredibly distracting but then about half an hour before I left and I was finishing my huge pot of tea off I um it became quieter and I was able to write what I wanted to write about in some way. I, I've got to edit it, but I was hoping to do some editing today, but it's not going to happen today because my head is full or fe is feeling increasingly full of cotton wool. So in this section, I just started to put auras around that spiral I put on the second one of these concentric circles created arches here because I decided to do something like start to draw little arcs there. It didn't look right so I carried on in a zigzag fashion and I think that is the centangle pattern Shattuck or Shaddock. Here I'd like to put something into this section and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with some orbs as they call them in Zentangle. And I'm going to fill this in with a series of orbs or beads or circles that are nested one behind the other. I think in architectural terms, things like this are called beads. I could be wrong, mind you. But I like that. That works nicely. Okay. So I think here I'm going to Now although it's a spiral I'm going to go back and do the same on the end of the of the bigger ones here where I'm just creating something that looks like a little leaf folding around and that starts to turn these from spirals into almost curled up leaves or ferns. It's very much a mooka pattern, I suppose. But, um, I'm 
kind of works. I'm just going to pop this here. It just seems to finish this off quite nicely and I think I'm going I'm going to have to. Excuse me for twisting and turning it so much, but it's one of those days where everything is going to twist and turn an awful lot. Did I do my autofocus? I don't think I did. There we are. Sorry for the bounce. But it means that although I may be turning things around, you won't be feeling totally seasick as everything goes in and out of focus as well. So that actually works quite nicely. And do you know, I think I can carry one of those lines there and there underneath here. So that would be interesting when I come to add some colour. Okay, so next thing... I'm going to have some of these similar to what I did here flaring out. Perhaps a third space, a fourth line. Let's go back and add some line weight there. And again, I'm going to do the same here where I'm going to Join them together in some fashion. I think here I'm going to be putting a little bit of weight on the end to give a little point there because I messed up a bit. But that's fine, I can live with that. And if I do it on this side as well, it looks like it's deliberate. So I'm essentially creating like little diamonds there where these come together. And I can emphasize that on this side now. works. So that's a nice one as well. And here I've got this lovely space here. This lovely space which will be perfect for a circle like this. I think with this one I'm going to put Little design inside. I'm sure this is listed in the Zentangle Primer as a fragment. I wouldn't know what one it was, but it just looks. Well, I could do that with the others now, couldn't I? So I'm creating a triangle inside with curved lines, lives, lines that curve towards the center of the circle rather than towards the edges. It doesn't have to be a perfect equilateral triangle. Like so. And that will look quite nice. This here needs something, this section here. I'm not quite sure what. I think what I might do to put two kinds of bands in that suggest there's a curve going on there. So that seems to work quite nicely. And I think I'll just put another aura line around that one because I've got the space to do it. This one, not so much, but I think I'll draw some lines out that go from the centre of these little shapes on the edge. This one, I'll leave as it is, but I'm going to put another aura just around it, like so. Because that just finishes it off quite nicely. Just add some ink into those corners just to finish them off neatly. Just checking whether I need to do that anywhere else. So that's beginning to look an interesting kind of thing going on. So much so. so pop that one, one there so it looks like it's hiding behind the two next to it. I'm just going to fill in 
those little gaps there, like so. Let's add a little bit of line weight at the end. And then this one, I think, rather than doing, shall I do the same? Could do. That's definitely off centre, which is fine. Yeah. It is what it is. We work with it. So that's looking quite nice and interesting. Okay, next. Need to go and fill some areas in there. All right. So I've got this going on here, and I think I might like to give this perhaps a leaf here, which means I'm going to put some more leaves around all of these, and these leaves have got an outside edge and the same shape inside, so they've got a border around them. And then put the veins here down the centre because that will work for me. And then I think we'll put another leaf there. Like so. And that'll work quite nicely. So for whatever reason, that just feels the right thing to do. Okay, so here... I'm going to put one of these growing like so. Which grew from going this way, and I'm going to add one in here to fill that space and to make it look like these are growing in a line. Because while it was growing so far away from this one it didn't look in the right place, although I did want to get them connected. And I'm just going to add perhaps a couple more here just to fill these spaces in a bit better. So that looks quite nice, and I, I don't want to put anything in the spaces around them yet. So I'll just close those spaces off. So we've got, because I like an enclosed space in my work. I don't like leaving things open. I, I feel almost like it's like you're framing a photograph in some way, so you've got those edges. That's just my personal preference. Um, everybody does things their own way, and... Art is all about expressing yourself and what suits you, not what suits necessarily everybody else. This is one of my little favourite patterns I like to add to things. So I'm just putting a little, looks like a little rounded leaf there and spiral going out that way from the base of it and that way and then connecting a couple of auras to it and I'll just add that there and it just creates a really nice kind of feel to you know it's a variation on the circle within a circle I suppose so that's quite nice I think what I might do here as well is that line I'm going to extend this way and it's not meant to be perfectly straight because if I try to do it perfectly straight, it's going to all look a bit odd and wobbly. So let's make it all odd and wobbly anyway. 
And if I try to make it perfectly straight, it'll look at odds with the wonkiness of everything else. That's a better way of describing it. So I'm just adding some wonky lines here, perhaps one more on this side. That'll do, but I will put a smaller aura border on the very outside of these so that I have a distinct area between what I'm going to do here, I think, compared to outside. And I am in the mood for creating something that perhaps, I don't know, it's all wobbly and wonky, so perhaps if I create wobbly and wonky lines this way, And that then would most probably work okay, I think. It's a weird kind of grid, but I can live with that. And uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it, but it's there now. I may... Oh gosh, did I really go that far over that line? Yes, I did. I may live to regret putting this here. I may very well. <laughs> As I'm thinking about it and I'm thinking, oh, what were you thinking of, Angela? The answer is I'm not. Said my head is full of cotton wool. I feel like my thought process is so slow. It's like working in cold syrup, treacle. And it's not like me to have slow thought processes. So, it seems to be one thing after another at the moment. It's what it is, and um, I'm certainly not going to um, try to force myself into anything else or try to deny that I'm needing a bit of TLC today. Don't know what that'll mean for me. I'll figure it out eventually. And I may have pushed myself a little too much doing a video, but hey ho. We all do daft things, don't we? What I did do yesterday evening, because I was feeling a bit, well, I was feeling, not a bit, I was feeling well out of sorts. So I went looking for a pattern, a knitting pattern. I've got loads of yarn here that I keep starting projects and stopping them. So I fancied knitting because it means that I can actually watch whatever I am watching on whatever I'm watching on and I knew there was a new episode of Criminal Minds Evolution released here in the UK yesterday and I'm enjoying this and uh, so I wanted to watch that at some point and a couple of other things uh, Star Wars I can always tell I'm not well when I go automatically towards Star Wars for things it's is what it is. I know that. It's these familiar comforting programs or series or films, music even, books that just make um not well they make sense to me. They're familiar so there's no surprises along the way. Characters are so familiar, it's almost like sitting with old friends and recounting past endeavours, as, as old friends tend to do, I gather. And I um, said so there's no surprises along the way, even though I know what the outcome's going to be in many ways. That means I focus on what I can see 
and, and things I haven't noticed before. And it's surprising the number of times I've seen these films, programmes, you know, series and, and so on. It's always things I missed in previous watches. And you think, oh, how did I miss that? Because something else had caught my attention and filled my mind for that moment. Ever a source of interesting things. And if somebody starts talking to me about them, I can totally geek out about it. But again, I'm fine with that. It is who I am. Now I've got a bit of a conundrum here. I've got this space here, which looks a little bit odd. And I am tempted to, I want to put this in, but I don't think I'm going to. I think instead, I'm going to fill it in a slightly different way. Gosh, I haven't drawn this for a long time. I'm going back to comforting things here. I think this is the Zentangle pattern Xander, but instead of having parallel bands-ish, I've got them all zigzagged all over the place. Because, well, why not? And I'm so tempted to fill this space with them as well. It's very tempting. Still haven't worked out what I want to do with that grid. Um, but I don't think I want to at the same time. I'm not really sure what I want to do here. But I think what I am going to do is I'm going to put a grid in of dots. And my grid is likely to be a little bit on the wonky side, quite deliberately. Because if I make it deliberately wonky, then I don't get too upset if it's not perfect. Works for me, might work for you, that idea. So I've got this here, and one of my favourite patterns is this one from Zentangle, which is Huggins. So I'm joining these two by putting an arcing line at the bottom here and over the top and then the next line up I reverse them so where this one points down between these two above darks up and they always alternate along the line so this one's arcing up so this one will arc downwards this one will go upwards downwards so this one will go upwards this one will go downwards, this one will go downwards too, and this one will go upwards. Okay, so I'll have one there, but I'm not going to worry about that for now. So if I turn this on the side, I need to connect these pairs together again. If I was to go upwards here, then I'd be carrying this line on, and that's not what I want. I want to go in a different direction. So I'm going this way. So I, I end up with something that's like a letter I here. The same here. And here. Just pull that one round. Here I'd need to join them going around and above and really I can't do that because it will go goes behind this. This one's down. Up. And then I'm doing down, up, so I can repeat the pattern. Bend down, bend up, bend down, bend up, bend down, bend up. And I am putting these little bits in at the end because they help to make sense of these ends. So this one can go down and then this one goes up. So I can put that end in like that. So that looks quite okay there. Part of me wants to have these running off this way, but I don't think so. I think I'm just going to finish these caps off on these ones by doubling these up. And again round there, even though you can't see it, and then if I were to 
aura inside these. Not that I've got the greatest amount of space in places. And I'm doing auras that are a bit too thick and fat. So I've just realised my eyes are being affected by my runny nose and whatever's going on this cold. Hopefully. I will test again for COVID in a day or two. Or three. Just in case. Especially if I get worse. So I don't want to go out and spread it to people. That would not be nice. So there we go. So that looks okay. I may come back and add things. This little section here, I'm just going to finish that off because I just think that would look nice there. And then I've got this section here. And do you know what? I'm going to just finish this off here because I think if I add, if I'm using a different colour pen, if I use a light pen here, I can fill this in with a textural pattern. I think would be work would work nicely. Okay, I've still got to work out what to do with this, and I think what I might do here is fill these in with almost like pebbles. So I end up with something that looks like a paved path, I suppose. I could go back and split some of these up or put some extra lines in, but I think today I'm just happy to have what it is. And this one is a reminder to me that I can use other coloured pens to draw with other than black. And I do have other coloured pens. Some are waterproof, others not. But oddly, the ones that aren't waterproof can have some really nice effects if you add water to them after you've drawn a pattern. So, you can hear birds tweeting outside, it's lovely. So I'm not going to get this finished today in terms of colour and shades and things because I'm desperate for something to drink and some... I definitely am starting to get a headache so I'm definitely going to need some painkillers and I may need to go back to bed. Hopefully not. Great. So <laughs> you're there going, great, just what I wanted at the moment, not. But there we are happens bound to happen I was going to catch something if I was going around where there are people just hope it's only a cold I'm moaning a bit I do apologize so my lunch yesterday I didn't have any cake I was very good but I had I had an errand to do before my lunch and I was quite surprised to actually find myself at the cafe. I often have to sneak up on myself if I want to, you know, to go out for lunch or whatever by myself. Otherwise I start fretting and panicking and getting all anxious that I don't do anything. So it's more the case of just sort of like ending up there and, and just going through with it rather than thinking about it. It sounds daft, but it's the only thing that works. It's like if I have to do an adulting phone call, I have to sneak up on myself. Because if I start thinking about it, I start thinking about what I'm going to say, how I'm going to say it. Will people understand me? Will I make sense? Do I really, am I making a fuss about it? You know, all the things. And eventually I just can't make that phone call. I've been like this all my life. Terrible. Um, and so it gets put off for another day. And it's not being lazy. It's not procrastinating. It's just that I become 
um, not physically paralysed, but sort of emotionally and mentally paralysed by it. It becomes overwhelming. So anyway, so I had a lovely pot of tea. I always have a pot of tea for two, for one. I think they, they recognise me there now because a, a pot of tea for one is such a pathetically small amount of tea in my book that I may as well have tea for two. And um, they often bring me a mug as well, which always makes me very happy. Rather than a, but yesterday I didn't. I got a little cup and tea, cup and saucer. But there we are. And um, I had a panini for lunch. Panini to eat. And they had on the menu goat's cheese and caramelised onion chutney. I do not like goat's cheese. It tastes metallic and sour in a not nice way. And um, I've only ever had goat's cheese once that I enjoyed and it did not taste sour or metallic. Everything I've tried since has always tasted sour and metallic, so I just don't. So I had it with some ordinary cheese. Well, I could have asked for brie, although they did a brie and cranberry one. I think it was brie and bacon and cranberry, but I'm sure I could have had brie without bacon. Vegetarian. So. <laughs> what was nice, they came out and asked me, um, you're vegetarian, aren't you? I said, yes. Okay, not a problem. I don't know why they had to ask me that. But, um, but it came... And it was lovely, and I enjoyed it, although they are a bit too much and a bit too heavy. But it was hot, it was crunchy, it was savoury with the sweet vinegariness of the chutney. So if somebody can ever tell me the purpose of salad leaves that are bitter and nasty, please tell me. That, that's a rhetorical question. I don't like salad leaves and I forget there, they put them on there. I usually say, please don't. I'm happy for the rest, most of the rest of a salad, you know, tomatoes and cucumber and things like that. But salad leaves, never really seen the point of them. I do not enjoy them. There were some lettuces I loved when I was younger. But everything seems to taste so bitter these days like that. And I mean really bitter, really don't enjoy it at all. In other words, I really dislike it. Having said that, there was some balsamic vinegar dressing on it, on it and there was some um, crisps, what you'd call potato chips, I think, in America. And um, so I used those to dip into the what I could of the balsamic vinegar dressing because I do like balsamic vinegar a lot. In fact, thinking about that, that may be an option for me. I might do some toast or something like that. Croutons or something to have with some balsamic vinegar um, dressing I can make. Anyway, so I think I'm okay with this here. These do look a little bit odd on the edge here, and I'm not quite sure what I want to do about them. Part of me thinks it will be okay for me just to complete the background, because what I'll do then is whatever I do in this section here, I'll repeat in those sections there, so it brings it all together. One last thing I need to do, apart from neaten up some of these areas where the ink's a bit patchy, is, um, let's put my initials in here, like so. That will look quite good there. Always put your initials on your work. I'll try and hide it away. doesn't always work out that way, though. And I'm going to use... This is a kneadable eraser and I'm just using that to get rid of the pencil lines that I put in, mostly, because I know that they'll either smudge 
into chalk pastel if that's what I'm going to use or into any other colouring medium that I choose to use. And I'm looking here and I'm seeing that I actually have my graphy tint pencils next to me and I think those can be quite nice. I've got autumn brown, shadow, shadow's quite nice. Where's that? Here's my piece of paper. This is now become a scrap piece of paper so I just want to see what colours I would like with this. So that's kind of a nice bluey grey colour with a water brush that doesn't want to have much water coming out. That's quite nice. Where was that autumn brown one? Up there. Let's have a look at that one and see what that's like here. I don't know why I'm putting the lid back on this. Ooh, that's nice. And that will go really nicely on here. Um, got, this is cocoa. I think this might be just too browny for me. I don't know. That kind of works. Um, I'm looking to see what other colours I've got. There's a port here, which would be a red. That could go nicely with the... Not much of a difference between that and the autumn brown. I quite like the port actually. I'll be something a little bit different. Is this storm? That's nicely purpley, isn't it? I like, quite like that as well. But let's have a look. I don't want to go purpley if I can help it. It's a green grey here. just grey on that background so I don't really want that one. Don't cool grey. Oh I've got slate ooh bang crash wallop slate green which would be a green no this one. Depends what colour how they how the colours work with the background. Don't think I've got any here that are Oops. Not sure if I've got a full set anywhere now. I possibly do have. I've put them somewhere safe, most probably. Ooh. Ocean blue. You have a look at steel blue, because that might just make me fairly happy. No, I think I'm going to go with the port, to be honest, because I think... That one, I think the port works night. I don't know, the storm is really quite nice. I'm looking, I really would like two colours, I think. I've got this one. What was that first one? Was the first one shadow? I think it was. Because that and the, I think that was the slate green, wasn't it? find that one slate green yeah I think those two will work really nicely together the blue and the green right the one thing I do want to do is to give them a bit of a sharpen just a bit of a one it's barely sharper it's a bit better we'll just do that one just that little bit more pop these out the way yeah, I'm glad. I think I think I'm glad I'm going to go with these. Hang on, I need to have a look at how they look with this brown pen. That's one of them. This is the other. If I don't like them with this brown pen, there's no point in me using them, is there? There's a con nice contrast there, but I'll tell you what, I'm going to have a look at the autumn brown and that port, or the actually storm and storm and port, I think. It's the storm, and there's the port. So there's port, and there's storm. Let's have a look.
yeah those go much nicer with the brown the brown practically disappears doesn't it there we are that makes sense so we've now got we've now got choices <laughs> now got options um and i think i'm going to start by adding um I think I'll add some port here to this area because I want to come back in here. With some patterns and I think if I stick to using a colour like this where I want the backgrounds. Put in. Now, if I don't press too hard, when I add water, I can move this colour around and get rid of these lines. Okay. So I've got this set. This is a, a, a section here. And then these ones are as well. So where's my brush? So I don't really know what I'm going to do with everything here. I could have put some more colour down, but I think I quite like it. Fairly light here. I can always add more, that's the thing. You can always go back and add more. It's not always easy to take it away um, and have it looking nice. i do this one. These dissolve so easily in the water. And they, these are always water soluble as well. So. And I've got this here. And all the bits that are in the background, that the background, you know, the background paper that's showing through will all be in the same kind of colour. So I think I need to think of a different different colour or colours to use for the rest of the tiles so that they don't conflict or that I'm not trying to pick things out in monochrome. I want a different different colour or colours. I'm not quite sure what I'd like. If I get some areas that are a bit denser in colour where the graphite tint isn't shifting because I pressed a bit too hard or there's a bit more graphite coming out, then I'm fine with that as well. It is what it is. Yeah, I'll have a much lighter area though, so I'll have a natural bit of a highlighty there. But that sort of like gives me that kind of frame or square there. Part of me is tempted to do some of these um, sections like in between here where, like here, there might be some some of the background showing through and here. Putting a lot more where there be shadow on. Here I think I quite like this section to appear as if the background's showing through. But I don't think there's anywhere else I want the background to show through, so this this background port colour. Stick to that and see how it goes. And then here I've got this going on. So that will look nice. And then I've just got this area here where it's quite dark in the towards that this side and then towards the other side of it, towards the ends of the section. Can't even find the right words today.
that actually looks quite nice. And part of me is thinking about, how about if I did this grid so that it seems that the grid is overlaying the graphite? Because that would save me fussing and faffing around, wouldn't it, with all of these colours? So I'm not worried about going over the lines with this either, because it will add to the interest and I haven't got the energy to, seemingly. So let's have a look and see how this works. The worst that happens is I go, no, nope, don't like it. Well, actually, I quite like that. That worked out better than I thought it would. Just too many bits here that are just not going to work well for me, I think, today. The thing is, I can always come back and I can add colour or take colour away or add highlights and so on. Once it's dry, I can do a lot of things. You can use more, more colour or bring chalk in for highlights, chalk pastels. Or add patterns to the sections. So I'm working quickly because I want to create something that's fairly smooth here. That actually, I think, will work quite nicely in its way. It's almost like there's a glow underneath it, which um, I find pleasing. Part of me thinks, oh, I could go in between these bits here and have that poking through. So it's almost like, yeah, that could be fun. It almost be like a more of a chain link. Let's have a look and see. Oops, as I put my finger in something wet. Look here, I'll do some of them. Because so I think this could be an interesting way of playing with this pattern. Instead of thinking of these as completely solid all the way across, let's see if we can have them so we've got a window through to the background colour of this area, this design. Because that's essentially what we've got here. Done with sharpening these, too late now, nearly done. I think that could work in an interesting kind of way. So let's have a look. Now this is going to take a good really while to try, especially this area which is a large area to get quite wet. But I'm in no rush to add details or anything else. I am tempted to use a fair amount of metallics, actually. But I'm not sure. So this could be interesting because it could look like we've got an almost wiry network pattern on the top of these. A weird version of chain mail or you know, uh, garden fencing or netting of some kind. I don't know if it makes sense, it just seems that it's something I just wanted to try and see. And again, I'm not this accordion journal book thing, um, it's not about perfection necessarily for me, it's about getting ideas down there, using mediums and techniques that perhaps I don't use on a regular basis or trying new things out, particularly when it comes to adding colour, because it's not my strong point. Well, in my mind it's not. Now that would be interesting when I, when I add colour or... Because I think I want to lighten these up so they really stand out. I want something metallic so they look like fences or something else. But I actually think that works. I think there's one area more 
just noticed here could be a little glimpse into that background as well. Doesn't mean I can't add pattern there. I think that'll do for now. I, I think that's as much as I want to do for now because I don't know what else to do. I don't know how else to finish this off. All I know is that this is the start and the background will be interesting. Okay, that's dried up there. I said this was all, but what I've got here is I've got a jelly roll, no eight, because they come with sizes on now. And one of my favourite patterns to fill spaces in, oddly, is, I think it's called Tripoli. And this is how I draw Tripoli. I know in Zentangle they start with a triangle and work in a circle round. I find that incredibly difficult to do. I get myself into all kinds of pickles. I forget where I am. This way actually works for me. So I've drawn a row of triangles alternating up, you know, with a point up and the point down. Next row, I'm going to start by drawing along the edges, of the bases of the ones that are pointing up in the row above. And there would actually be one there. And here there'd be one. And then I can go in between and draw the triangles that are in between. This just makes more sense to me. And then I can do the same on the next row is I start with the triangles at the bases. Yeah, I'm going to need quite a big one. So I don't know what I've done wrong here, but I've done something wrong here. I've missed, I think I've missed one out. I don't know. But I will, oh gosh, that's going to be a bizarre shaped one. Yeah, Angela, don't talk while you do this. It's not going to happen. But it will bend and flex and wave and curve the same unless you put, you know, guidelines and so on in. But I just find it so much easier to draw in this kind of way. So here I'm just popping sort of like having the edges where they finish, just going up to that brown line and just as if it's disappearing underneath, like so. And then that is a nice way to add something to that section that isn't overpowering, that is subtle, but still, you know, adds some interest there. And I can do that if I want to, to all these other sections or not. I just realised it's going to be awkward to do those in, in these sections. So what I'm going to do instead is I'll use different patterns with white on in different places. So here I'm putting groups of three dots together and single dots just to fill the corners and edges where I can. So if I make the three dots bigger than the others, they'll look like there's patterns going on. And it's still a triangular pattern, but it's just a bit more random. So that will work as well. This is bugging me here because I have definitely missed something, but it is what it is. But these ones, I think what I'll do with these... I'm going to put white aura or white, a you know, smaller version of the shape in the middle, or whatever you want to call it. So I just think that might work here quite nicely. The nice thing about this is there's so little of the graphy tint here that it the jelly roll won't pick up any of its colour, which can happen with watercolours or other water-based media if you've got a lot of them down. 
Distress inks especially. They'll pick the colour up like nobody's business. I quite like this. I like the white against this colour because it adds that lightness and brightness that you don't have with the tan background. And I'm not going to add shading into each of these sections to create anything else. I'm just going to leave it exactly as it is. It's almost like the skin of a crocodile or alligator or some such. Almost, but not quite. Very stylized version if it is. So here I'm just going to put some sections in like that. So Things like this really do work quite nicely. I think so. This one's going to be interesting, but I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick up that idea of triangles, but I'm going to, instead of doing open triangles here, I'm going to fill them in with white if the pen will behave itself. So it will start to pick up some of the graphite. So it takes me back to this here, doesn't it? Links back. Once I work out how I want to add colour or shadow and highlight to the rest of this, I will share with you for sure. But it's not like me to draw in a colour that isn't black. I'm not sure I'm happy with it. Because part of me knows that black is my thing. Things never look quite the same to me if I do them in a different colour. Never feel right. Perhaps that's because I only ever draw in black, usually. Don't say only, only but the vast majority drawing in black, I do have to say. This picks those triangles up as well. See? Child pens. Blessings and curses. Curses when they get clogged because the medium you're drawing on is has got particles it can pick up. That'd be fine, nearly done. These won't be perfect, but you know I'm not going to try to go over them with white gel pen either because I know from past experience that is a recipe for disaster. I think I've gone well over the hour for you. That actually works because it does pick those triangles up at the top, doesn't it? And then these other sections. This one here, I think I may... Let's have a look. There we go. We're getting little triangles in there. Like so. So you can see it follows through there and gives that suggestion that this is carrying on. Interesting. Different way of looking at things. This one here, I think I'm going to do the dots in groups of three and then scattered tiny ones just to fill the space in. And the others I'm going to leave as they are for now because they are quite small spaces and I am tempted to just fill them with little white dots but I may just leave them as they are for that variety and variation. So I hope this has given you some ideas, some things to think about and to try. I've certainly had an interesting time doing it. I'm desperate for something to drink and some painkillers at the moment. And somewhere where the fan's buzzing on my computer and it's making my ears buzz because my ears are being affected by this. So um, I just would like to say I hope you have fun with this and um, give it a go and see what happens and I am so bugged by that section there and I just don't know what to do to fix it yet I may do a little bit of 
actually, actually a little bit of water and then actually that'll work because that makes the um, dissolves the gel pen so when it's dry I can put a different sized triangle in there fixed it things are always fixed bubble I wouldn't have done that on black it would have it would have created grey on permanent black but there it's worked I've managed to pick it up there might be a slightly lighter spot there but it'd be fine so look after yourselves take care have a go at this find time to be creative and hopefully I'll see you again soon um snot and cold willing take care now ta-ra <laughs> bye